In this video, we're going to take a look at how to do some more complicated stoichiometry problems, ones that might ask you to find the percent by mass or might give you percent by mass in the problem statement or the percent that reacted or the percent yield. Um, let's take a look at how to do those in stoichiometry problems. So take a moment, try this problem, and then you can check your work. A mixture of KClO3, potassium chlorate, and potassium chloride has a mass of 0.950 grams, and it was heated to produce O2. After heating, the mass of the solid was 0.7 grams. Assuming all the KClO3 decomposed to KCl and O2, calculate the mass percent of KClO3 in the original mixture. So it might be helpful to write a reaction here. You see decompose, there's a decomposition reaction. In a decomposition reaction, there's just one reactant or one thing on the left-hand side, which is KClO3. And there'd be, um, and this is telling you it's decomposing into KCl, which is a solid. Ionic compounds are solids. And O2, which is a gas, a diatomic gas. Uh, make sure you balance this because the coefficients will be important in stoichiometry. So whenever you're writing a reaction, make sure it's balanced before using it. So one common mistake in this would say, okay, 0.70 grams, if all the KClO3 was used up, then this 0.70 grams must be just KCl. So I'm going to use this 0.7 grams of KCl, and I'm going to turn it back into KClO3 with the stoichiometry. But just be careful doing that, because this 0.7 grams of KCl was not all produced by the reaction. Some of it was there to start with in the mixture. There's a mixture that contains KCl. So I can't use the 0 0.70 grams in stoichiometry to find out how much of the KClO3 was used up because that 0.7 was not all produced. I can, however, find the amount of gas that was created by taking these two gram amounts, my original mixture, and then the KCl that was left, I could subtract them and I can figure out how much gas was produced. I would get that 0 0.250 grams of O2 was produced. So now I can use this amount of O2, because it's the only gas here, um, I can take this point, and if it's conservation of mass, whatever mass I've lost has to have gone somewhere, has to go into the gas. Um, so I can say that, okay, this 0 0.250 grams of O2, now I can use this um, to use the stoichiometry. So I'm going to uh, mole it out because to use those coefficients, it should be in moles. I am going to use the coefficients from my balanced reaction to turn moles of O2 into moles of potassium chlorate. And now, since they're talking about mass percents, I am going to mass it out using the molar mass of potassium chlorate. And I get that. Um, if 0 0.250 grams of O2 were created, then 0.639 grams of potassium chlorate must have been used up to create that. Now I can get the mass percent in the original mixture because I have the mass of my part, KClO3, and I have the mass of the whole thing. So I'm just doing uh, mass of part over mass of whole and multiply by 100 to turn it into a percent, and I get 67.2%. Trying to keep around three significant figures. Here's another example. In this case, rather than finding percent by mass at the end, I give percent by mass in the beginning. Um, so take a moment and try this. So I'm telling you there's this iron ore sample, and a lot of times these ores are mixtures, so it doesn't contain just Fe2O3. It contains other things, but it is the source of the Fe2O3 in this reaction. So I have this, this mixture that contains an iron um, oxide, 92.0%, and I'm telling you it reacts with excess CO2 to produce carbon dioxide um, and iron in this reaction below. And I want to know how much carbon dioxide is produced in two conditions, if all the Fe2O3 reacts. So we're going to look at that first, and then we'll look at part B. Okay, so if I'm starting with dimensional analysis, I'm starting with this 0.592 grams of ore. But I don't see ore written anywhere in this reaction. I see Fe2O3. So I want to turn grams of ore into grams of Fe2O3. And I can do that with this percent by mass. So some people might be comfortable just right off the bat taking 92% of this or 0.9, multiplying this by 0.92. If you are, if you like seeing things out with dimensional analysis, how I like to handle a percent by mass is um, by 
kind of turning it into a fraction for every 100 grams of ore there would be 92 grams of Fe2O3 so it's kind of like changing it into the mass of the part over the mass of the whole kind of changing it into that fraction that you would see in mass percent so you can always change a percent into a conversion factor by putting that number over 100 um, for the mixture or you might need it the opposite way you can always flip this conversion factor as needed now I'm in grams of Fe2O3 I don't want to be in stuff about Fe2O3 I want to be stuff about CO2 so I can use these coefficients but to use them I have to be in moles okay so I'm going to mole it out using the molar mass now I'm in moles of Fe2O3 I can use the coefficients as a 1 to 3 ratio here and now I'm in moles of CO2 I don't want to be in moles of CO2 I'm asked for mass so I can use the molar mass to change it into grams of CO2 now I um, just plug it into my calculator and I get 0.45, um, keeping th two, three significant figures of 0 0.50 grams of CO2. That would be if all of that iron, um, iron 3 oxide reacts. But if only 86% of it reacts, I'd only have 86% of this number. So if you feel comfortable at this point, you can just multiply this number by 0.86 and take 86% of it. Because if you have 86% of your reactant there, you'd have 86% of your product. Or if you're more comfortable seeing the percent as a conversion factor, again, as I said, I can kind of change this. For every 86 grams of CO2, um, for every 100 grams, I should say, of CO2 possible, 86 grams of CO2 is actually produced. I can change this into stuff about the product. Um, if you wanted to instead, you could have changed this whole setup if you wanted to instead. And in here, I could insert um, a conversion factor where using that 86 percent for every 86 or every 100 grams of iron three oxide in the ore, 86 grams of it would react. Again, you're multiplying by 8.86. If you want to show that as a conversion factor, I'm showing it here in two ways. You could do it at the end, or you can do it at the beginning with the reactant, or you can do it at the end with the product. You can even use this as a percent yield of 86 percent of the, that reacts, you're getting an 86% yield of your product. And that's why products a lot of times don't have a 100% yield because not all of the reactant reacts. Um, so if you wanted to, you can also use this equation. Percent yield is the actual yield, that's what's actually produced, over the theoretical yield, that's how much is possible, times 100. And these could be both be in units of mass, they could both be in units of moles, as long as they are in the same unit to cancel. So if I wanted to plug in, okay, 86% would be my yield, okay, 0.450 would be my theoretical that I got in part A, okay, that would be if all of the iron 3 oxide reacted, and I can solve for the actual yield of it of CO2 in grams. A lot of times it's easy to just take away the percent and make it um, the 0.86 and use the decimal of the yield and get rid of the 100. So you're really just taking again point, you're multiplying 0.86 by my theoretical 0.450. You're taking 86% of it and you get 86% less because only 86, or you're getting less, not 86%, but um, you're getting less because not all of it reacted. Okay. Um, let's look at another example going a different way, okay, same reaction, same iron ore percent by mass of um, Fe2O3, um, and I want to know what mass of iron ore, in this case now, is needed to produce 140 grams of CO2 if the reaction has a 72.5% yield. Take a moment, try the example, check your work. Um, there's a lot of different ways you can do this. If you want to use that percent yield equation, okay, I know the actual, how much is actually produced in the lab or in, in real life, it was 140 grams, um, and I know the percent yield, so I can find theoretically how much CO2 could have been produced, which was 193 grams. Um, and now I can use this 193 grams of CO2. And I can use stoichiometry to, as long as I mole it out, I can use stoichiometry to convert the CO2 into the Fe2O3, which is what the iron ore contains. So I'm moling it out. I'm using stoichiometry, 3 to 1 ratio. I'm going backwards from product to reactant. Now I'm going to mass out that reactant to change it into mass since they're talking about mass needed. And I don't want mass of Fe2O3. I want mass of the iron ore. Well, that iron ore contains 92% Fe2O3. 
So for every 100 grams of ore, there's 92 grams of Fe2O3. That's how I said you can use that percent as a conversion factor by giving that 100 grams to the mixture, and in this case, the percent, which is 92 grams to the part. And if I multiply this out, I get 254 grams of ore. If you don't like doing it this way, okay, to start with, you might say, okay, I have 140 grams CO2 that's actually made, um, but for every 72.5 grams of CO2 actual, there'd be 100 grams of CO2 um, that could theoretically be made. Um, and that's using that percent yield as a conversion factor to turn it into theoretical. Now I can do that same thing where I mole it out, change it into moles of Fe2O3, change that into grams of Fe2O3, change that into grams of iron ore with that percent mass as a conversion factor and I get the same answer. If you don't like looking at that 72.5 percent yield in the related to the product, you could kind of relate that to the reactant if you're more comfortable. So if you wanted to, let's say, okay, I'm going to start with that 140 grams of CO2. I'm going to mole it out. I'm going to change it into moles of Fe2O3. I'm going to mass that back out. But you know what? Huh, there's a 72.5% yield. So what does that mean to me? That means that, okay, for every 72.5 grams of Fe2O3 that's used up, there has to be 100 grams that are present because not all of this is being used, only 72.5%. Um, so you can write the conversion factor like this using percent yield as a conversion factor but relating it to your reactants. So if you're more comfortable you can do that and what you'll notice is any one of these ways that I'm writing it in my calculator the math is all the same and I get the same answer. So I'm just showing you a couple different ways you can do it all approaching all with the same answer and there might be even a, a different way that you did it and some people like to do it more logically rather than doing it out with dimensional analysis and that can make sense too if it's an AP just make sure you explain uh, in your free response make sure you explain how you did it uh, make sure you mention oh 72.5 yield so somewhere in your calculations people can follow it your grader can follow it. Okay. So notice I'm being very specific about my units, um, and if I'm using percent as a conversion factor, I like to show it like this with dimensional analysis, but feel free to do what's comfortable to you.